Hello and welcome to another episode of Heart of Poland. Did you know one interesting fact? We are coming up on our 100th episode. It's going to be in September this year of Heart of Poland. So it is the long, longest running program about Poland. We cover uh, culture, business, education, arts, history, you name it. And today's guest, um, I think today's conversation is very, very timely. I first spoke to Piotr Arak of the Polish Economic Institute in March, early March, when the world was going to hell in a handcart and no one had uh, a blooming clue what the heck was going to happen with COVID-19 and all of our jobs and our livelihoods and our economies in the world that we live in. Well, Piotr is back with us today. I'm going to bring him into the conversation to ask a very important question. Is the Polish economy okay? Are we going to be all right? If you are running a business, if you have land, if you're invested in the Polish Stock Exchange, if you work here and you're worried about your job security, Piotr is going to make you either feel happier or, or, or sadder. And indeed, Piotr, welcome back. Hello. Indeed, um, some data came out, I think, for August this month on consumer confidence saying that actually consumers are a little bit more worried now than they were um, and a bit of a dip there. But before we get there, I just want to ask you some quick fire questions, if you don't mind. Okay. Bit, little, don't mind. As it were. I want to buy a house in Poland. Good idea or bad idea? Well, uh, currently the pandemic didn't influence the, st the housing market that much. So uh, I would say the prices are probably going to go up. So it's if if you're willing to do it as an investment project, then probably you're still going to have some cash out uh, if you do that. So it's not a bad idea, um, but there are some fewer investors right now. So, so many people are, uh, see the uncertainty about this and are a bit scared of what could happen uh, in the next years. But still, I think the prospect is a bit optimistic. So you can still earn uh, a good buck on investing in um, in some housing projects. I want to set up a business this year in Poland. Good idea or bad idea? Vague question. Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's a very fair, fair and good question. Uh, many people actually decided to open businesses. Currently, we have more businesses than at the start of the pandemic. Um, so I would say that many Polish people and foreign citizens actually decided to do that. And th that this time, uh, although it's a recession, so we had in the second quarter we had a recession, many people decided to open um, businesses. So I would say uh, it's still a good uh, opportunity if you have a good and, vi uh, vi and viable business uh, plan. This is the most important issue. So if you have a plan to do something for the uh, first year and the second year, and probably it's a good idea. And if you have a pandemic kind of business, then uh, probably it's also going to be quite useful. Yeah, awesome. I want to invest in the Polish stock market. Good idea or bad idea? Well, actually, the stock exchange has uh, the most um, uh, small investors in a long time. So the capital is actually pouring to the stock exchange. Uh, you can see that as a difference between the Main Street and Wall Street, as uh, as you see in the, um, uh, in the American economy. So the stock exchange is actually doing pretty well, uh, not the Main Street. So the labor market or the, um, the economy overall is not in a... Uh, good state as the stock exchange in the stock market. And this is probably uh, due to the fact that those businesses are, you know, not directly hit or uh, connected with the um, typical uh, Polish economy connected with industry. So it's a good idea. Actually, it's a very good idea. Everything seems to be a good idea. It's got one problem, no money. It's, that's, that's my issue. So many ideas, so little money. I want to hire a Pole, a Polish employee or a Polish subcontractor agency, let's say. And again, very vague question. Good idea or bad idea? Ooh, it's a perfect idea. So if you want to have, a, a, yeah, you know, Poland um, is, is the um, least hit uh, in economic terms uh, uh, economy in the European Union uh, from the bigger economies. Uh, we have also the second smallest uh, employment, unemployment rate in the European Union. So I would say that uh, it's fairly good to have a Polish subcontractor uh, because the businesses are, uh, you know, not going bust and uh, they're still operating. Many investors actually was were going with the same uh, question uh, to Polish companies at the beginning of the pandemic and through April and May because of their subcontractors in Asia uh, stopped, uh, you know, fulfilling their orders. And um, this is why many, many Polish businesses actually uh, had new contracts. Uh, so that's why Polish exports are booming. 
Uh, how is Poland on PPE, by the way? Because if ever there was a business you wanted to be in in March uh, when we first spoke, Piotr, PPE would be it. Do we make many of the masks and gowns that are fundamental parts of uh, personal protective equipment? Well, this is uh, it's not a big part of the economy. So uh, I would say that um, uh, Poland is the only and single last country in the European Union that still produces textile. Uh, and still uses textile and still, uh, you know, produces fashion, for example, uh, suits or whatever. So uh, this is actually because of our industry is a bit um, underdeveloped in comparison to the other uh, advanced economies in the European Union. And that makes us a bit more um, adaptable to this current circumstances. And this is one of those uh, parts of the economy that was contacted by foreign investors. Uh, because the subcontractors in fashion actually from Asia did not fulfill those, those orders that um, some of those companies uh, wanted to uh, to have. Um, I don't know, probably the, the, the price of masks from Asia is still uh, so cheap uh, that uh, we won't be competitive in, in those terms. But this is not a big chunk of the market. Uh, and I wouldn't say, I wouldn't base our economic model on, on you know, doing those uh, kind of products. Sure. Okay. Well, if ever there was a good opportunity to near shore, it would be now, as you say. So uh, the Polish government had some big hopes for this year that it was going to be the first, um, I think I'm saying this correctly, zero budget deficit year. Um, I believe that was the plan. Uh, a jednak, as they say in Polish, things have turned out somewhat differently. Budget deficit yeah. of well over 100 billion zloty. Um, as you've already said, the Polish economy has done remarkably well relative to its European uh, neighbours. But are we? Is it all going down in flames, Piotr, uh, or are we actually doing just fine? Well, if you look at the deficit number, because this was the the the, um, uh, the second budget bill for this year was uh, presented yesterday by the government, uh, we know that the deficit rate of the government, so the central government, is going to be at the level of five percent GDP. This is, of course, not the whole deficit. Um, uh, we also have uh, our public agencies and the self governments, which also uh, are going to be in debt during this year. Um, this is because of the response rate of the state uh, and uh, a lot of the Polish Development Bank, Polish Development Fund, which are not included in the central government's um, uh, uh, Excel, basically. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, what that means is that uh, the deficit is probably going to be a bit larger when you do the general government, uh, so the whole sector uh, in comparison to the other countries. Uh, but I would say that probably we're going to be uh, not the uh, uh, country with the largest deficit uh, in 2020 in the European Union. Uh, in Italy and France, it's probably going to be a bit uh, between 12 or 14 percent of GDP. In Germany, we know that it's going to be at 9 percent GDP. Uh, so it's going to be a lot higher than in 2008 uh, during the financial crisis. Um, Poland back then had a deficit rate of uh, approximately 8 to 9 percent. So uh, it's, we're probably going to be about the same levels uh, when you do the, do the math. We're not in a bad position, um, but the historic moment of a zero uh, deficit for the, uh, for the central government just passed. Yeah, well, there's a lot of politicians in countries around the world wishing none of this had ever happened so they could get on with having their relatively easy lives. Um, how would you overall um, rate the Polish government's response to the crisis in terms of support for the economy and everything they've done? Uh, it's difficult to, raise, uh, to rate, uh, you know, the policy response that we advised on. So uh, it's a bit uh, as assessing our own work in a bit. So uh, I would say that um, probably one of the, the, the biggest and most important issues and which I advocated for is to, uh, to have a timely response. So not to wait uh, for other countries to do something for the bills to pass the German parliament. Uh, to be one of the first countries to do this, so because this is going to be, uh, this is going to bring the confidence to the market. It's going to bring confidence to the consumers, and it's also going to uh, bring confidence to the companies and business owners. And this was really important from my point of view. And the second uh, element of this uh, package, uh, which overall in the European Union is very similar, so some kind of Kurzarbeitsgeld scheme, so some kind of 
uh, additional money in order for the companies to sustain employment, uh, some kind of um, uh, um, uh, liquidity uh, uh, funding for the companies, um, so increasing uh, the amount of money in the economy and sustaining businesses, uh, so giving them uh, them sedative actually, so so they can uh, work out this this period of lockdown. And um, uh, the, the the other thing I wanted to, to for the in the response which uh, was delivered is not to have any kind of employee uh, or business um, to be excluded from the funding uh, from the possibility. So in Poland, for example, we have people employed on junk contracts, freelancers, um, uh, self-employed, which who were also eligible to get some kind of uh, social benefits uh, during this pandemic. So this is the first time since uh, ever, basically, that we didn't leave those people behind uh, mm. in uh, uh, economic crises. And uh, I guess this is one of the most important issues from my point of view. So not to have anybody excluded, and uh, the other thing, to have a timely response. Of course, everything could be uh, perfect. Uh, um, we saw that the law was long, and there were many uh, you know, difficult uh, formulas at the beginning uh, for the businesses. Uh, this was you know, a trial by error, so nobody was uh, basically ready to enforce uh, a new law. Uh, just in a, in a month or so. So this was one of the most important issues. And uh, during the last crisis, so in 2008, it took the government about eight months in order to introduce new law uh, for the companies that are going under uh, during the financial crisis. So uh, I would say that this, this, this is what uh, we did better now. And if you're interested, ladies and gentlemen, we have an interview with Marek Nudujak, who's the Under Secretary of State in the Ministry for uh, uh, Technology, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, thank you. Uh, and um, we, he talks more about this package, which is out there. And by the way, if, if you think it was uh, lesser, I've just come back from the UK, where self-employed people really have been a bit thrown under the bus. So um, despite the fact the UK package was significantly bigger. We like being a gelon en visper. Pozza. We've been a Jelana Vispa for quite a long time, a green island. Are we still a green island uh, in a sea of um, uh, economies? Or wh where are we relative? The, the GDP hit, for example, in the UK, just literally, I had to sit down for five minutes, Piotr, and think about it. The biggest ever uh, contraction in GDP in, in the British economy since forever. Um, since World War II. Uh, crazy. Just crazy. 20%, uh, I think it was even more. Yeah, 22 uh, just flabbergast. Did you ever think you were going to live? I mean, it's a stupid question. Did you ever think you were going to live and see numbers like that from any economy? I mean, if from a Western economy at least. Well, it's not the first crisis I, I see. I remember that when the Lehman Brothers went under in 2008 and I just saw uh, what was happening to the stock market. Uh, so, and given the, the nature of economics and the business cycle, you know, there's a bust, uh, bust somewhere. Uh, going to uh, in the future that's going to happen. It's the, the question what's going to be the reason for a small or a big crisis. Uh, so I was expecting and everybody was expecting um, a slowdown in 2020. The overall economy of the world was slowing down. We saw that it was happening. Uh, we had a recession uh, in the second quarter. We saw staggering uh, numbers from coming from Spain and the UK, France, uh, even Germany, uh, because their their economy contracted by uh, almost 12 percent, and uh, the Polish economy contracted by 8 percent. This is also a very big number, so don't don't get me wrong. Uh, but um, uh, given the the, the history uh, of the economies, uh, one can expect that something like that could happen. History doesn't end. Uh, sometimes it's come it comes back and hits you. Um, nobody expected a pandemic, uh, so uh, this is this is uh, as um, uh, as the force initiating the recession. Um, so, but to, to get to see those numbers, it's uh, it's uh, I guess it's spectacular uh, because this is you know 1929 uh, basically. Uh, so we're getting back to a very very dark period of uh, of time when um, the unemployment rose a lot in countries like Germany, Poland. Poland, uh, you know, uh, was going through after the crisis. Uh, seven years it took the economy to go back uh, to the growth 
uh, that it had. Seven years of crisis, uh, uh, of poverty in Poland. Don't, people don't know that in the West, but we were very hardly strict yeah. by, the, um, by the global crisis back then. Uh, also by bad policy response uh, from the Polish government in the 30s. So uh, this is another issue. If only you'd been there then, Piotr, then, then maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. They talk about a country that only existed for 11 years, which is also quite flabbergasting as well when you think about yeah. what that entails. Yeah, it's, it's bad when the when the military makes economic decisions. That's what I can tell you. <laughs> Said the economist. Yeah. <laughs> you should hear what they say about you guys. <laughs> 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 Confidence is the uh, the grease in the machine uh, of any economy. You've talked a bit about, uh, we talked about consumer confidence, a little bit about business confidence. Where, what, what is the confidence looking like in for consumers and businesses? Um, you know, so um, August and um, uh, July are those two months where you see increases in confidence levels. So although we had a, a pandemic, uh, people, when they go, uh, you know, even if they stay at home or go uh, just to the Polish Sea, not to Greece, in order to, for, to, uh, for their vacation, uh, they still, you know, tend to think more about the sun. Uh, not about the state of the economy and about their home budget. Uh, so they're more optimistic. Uh, and every year uh, with, with autumn comes the realization of the, of the situation. And also we have a possible second wave of the, uh, of the coronavirus um, and also a flu, uh, you know, the seasonal flu, with also, which also has going to have some economic repercussions because it's so similar to the coronavirus. And um, I would say that those two um, issues are going to probably uh, give a very a very big drop in the confidence levels of the consumers. So that's why people like me who know the data and not, not only think about seasonality of uh, uh, and sun, um, uh, we know that given the, the the state of the economy now, so in the third quarter, seeing good data coming from uh, the Polish export sector, uh, from Polish industry and also good information coming from other economies in the European Union, uh, because we see a lot of them going into um, uh, uh, expansion, not recession in the third quarter. Uh, I, I try to be a bit more optimistic uh, about the state because we need to you know, provide confidence to the people. So they're not scared and they're not left with their, uh, with their thoughts because lockdown uh, you know, ended. Uh, we're not going to probably have a same policy response uh, in autumn as we had in uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, uh, the, the the you know we are wiser now. We know more about the coronavirus. We know what to do. We know how to air travel. Uh, we know how to um, you know provide even restaurant services uh, with masks. People um, just have to. Um, live with the situation and you, when you see the pictures coming from Wuhan especially uh, currently where also this is brought, brought by the Chinese propaganda in order to see how circumstances can change so to bring optimism to the Chinese consumer uh, which is also important. Well you talked about um, the impact of sun I've just come back from two weeks holiday in the UK which was boiling hot uh, uh, hence my tan I've not been on a Greek beach bad place to be i've been in the uk which is surprisingly safe and uh uh yeah i was never expecting that i would have 35 degree uh heat holiday in, in the yeah UK. i heard that i heard we about it for that kind I of just weather. had my family from britain coming here so. ah okay so uh yeah so they were also peach pink but british yeah. lobster pink as, as we say um, and this brings me on to a subject which is also playing a key role which is climate change and droughts and water levels uh on the polish economy um bit of a double hit here with um, seasonal workers not being able to come in and, and heavy drought on um, Poland's critical agricultural sector. Um, certainly feels like the price of strawberries this year was a hell of a lot more expensive than I ever remember it, uh, and raspberries too. Uh, so inflation um, is pinching in the pocket. Let's talk about uh, drought, inflation, uh, agriculture a little bit. So, yeah, there is one, uh, you know, specific divide we need to have, uh, uh, like in, econo in economic terms. So inflation, on one hand, is not that high in, in Poland. So it's just uh, up just above 3% right now. Um, and it's also dropping. So when the Polish central bank expects it to, to drop in autumn and then to levels of uh, below 3% uh, 
uh, just right next to the Polish inflation uh, target of two and a half percent. In other European countries, the inflation rate is lower, but it is not. Does that mean that some products uh, within the inflation basket can go uh, have see spikes in the prices, and s- some prices of some certain goods can go up a lot, as with strawberries, as with um, Last year it was, uh, in Polish it's Pietruszka, so I don't remember the... Parsley. Parsley, yeah. So uh, it was also going a lot up, so it was like 15 15 Polish water for for a kilogram, but it's uh, connected with drop. Parsnips, sorry, that's parsnips. Parsnips, parsnips, Parsnips. okay. Uh, For for last, uh, you know, uh, in the last two years we had drought, and this means that uh, every year the, um, um, the, the farmers uh, tend to get uh, uh, worse, or, uh, worse um, produce uh, on the market, uh, which means it's fewer parsley, fewer strawberries, and the quality of them is also lower. Um, this is a, like a fundamental and strategic problem because of the lack of water and the climate change, which also needs a, a very important um, policy response, and um, I would say that some uh, some uh, policies were introduced in this matter, but it's not going to stop next year uh, or the second year. But it doesn't mean that the inflation rate is going to you know go up so rapidly. It means that some products, if we would eat only strawberries, if we would eat only vegetables, then we probably would be very much healthier, and probably the the, the value of them in our basket uh, of the goods that we buy would be bigger. But we don't, so uh, it doesn't mean that the the overall inflation rate is going to go out of control. Some goods are probably just going to be a bit more expensive. Yeah, I mean, some double digit increases in uh, in the food sector. So it seems yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a family of four. It's getting painful. Piotr, thank you very much for giving us this. It's always nice when an economist is able to explain economics to a dummy in simple layman's language. And that's why we love Piotr, because uh, he really is very good at explaining to me how inflation works. And I hope you have found this interesting. If you've got a question for Piotr, of course, you can write uh, in the comments below. Anything we haven't covered that you think is important for um, foreigners living in Poland, business people living in Poland, business people interested in Poland, uh, employees in Poland as well, anything you'd like to, any final thoughts you'd like to leave them with? Thank you. <laughs> oh, suddenly get worried there. <laughs> thank you, then, Piotr. Thank you very much for joining us. And maybe we can make a date. Maybe we can um, hook up uh, and see each other maybe in another quarter's time or so and, and see how the economy's going. That would be great. What do you yeah, think? maybe in person. Yes, let's do it in our socially yeah. distanced, beautiful studio with the wonderful yeah. sound. I'll see yeah. you there. Thank you very much, Piotr Adek from the Thank you very much. Institute. Thank you very much. See you again. Back to your um, Excel spreadsheets and uh, numbers. <laughs> Thank you very much, Piotr. He's a fantastic guy, isn't he? He's really knowledgeable and he does explain economics uh, very simply. So people like you uh, and I can explain it and act on it. So I hope you found this episode interesting. You can go back, clicking on the link in the description to find out when Piotr and I were staring at the barrel of a gun, quite literally not knowing what was going to happen. There's always this moment when the people are coming out of Lehman Brothers with boxes and you just don't know what kind of crisis it's going to be and that was that interview you can kind of see the tension in the air a little bit i'm sitting there thinking ah what's going on piotr is cool as a cucumber as usual we've got a whole host of other uh, conversations and interviews um about coronavirus as well if you're looking and of course i highly recommend the firstnews.com where you'll find dedicated articles about poland's response to coronavirus how safe you are when you come into the country if you're living in the country what's coming up next so as ever of course i encourage you to check the firstnews.com wherever you can find it and to share this episode wherever you can on social media we do facebook linkedin youtube twitter we draw the line at tiktok but i've already explained why so i'll see you again for another beautiful episode of heart of poland